Hello, welcome and sorry about the video quality in what follows. I had some technical issues. I've studied quite a lot at the university level and during that time I have obviously written several papers, um, essays and the like. And I thought I'd start a video series where I talk about those uh, papers that I for some reason find still relevant enough or otherwise potentially interesting enough to make videos about. So uh, I'm gonna start with a paper that actually uh, was my mandatory English course presentation or rather it was the paper for the oral presentation. It's from 2001, so over 20 years old at this point. But I think the, uh, the main point in this really short paper is still something that some people apparently are not aware of. And this is something that comes up frequently in social media. The title of the paper was uh, The Definition of Atheism. Atheism as an exemplar of rationality. I begin this paper by uh, the definition of atheism. So, uh, really, to begin discussing this, uh, we need to start with the realization that basic uh, form of the word is theism. So, the A in front of the word is uh, just the negation of theism. So it's the same kind of word like things like amoral, atypical, amorphous, uh, asymmetrical, that sort of thing. Then the question that we need to address is what is theism? So we need to define atheism and theism. The word theist, for example, can be understood to mean a person who believes in the existence of God. And the operative word here is believes. It's not uh, the word existence that we should focus on. It's the word believes. So theism is about belief. It's not about existence. We can look at three sentences. One, uh, I believe that God exists. Two, I do not believe that God exists. And three, I believe that God does not exist. The first sentence is clearly what a theist would say. So that kind of encapsulates the basic meaning of theism. And the third sentence is what frequently mostly theists would say that atheism means or what an atheist would say. But in my experience, and already this was the case over 20 years ago, is that most atheists actually think that what they mean when they say they are atheists is the second sentence. I do not believe that God exists. The third sentence, uh, I believe that God does not exist, is um, stronger, or we might say positive form of atheism. So that's what uh, so-called strong or positive atheists would say. But that uh, is kind of problematic uh, because uh, for one it requires the definition of God for it to make any sense. We can't talk about something without a definition for it. And of course in these discussions, especially before social media, people usually just assumed what the word God means. But we'll get back to that. Anyway, um, the usual form of atheism, or the way that most atheists understand it, as far as I know, is that their atheism is not really about whether God exists or not, but rather it's about whether they believe or don't believe 
in something. So we could express the typical form of atheism with a sentence like I do not believe in God or I have no belief concerning God. That would be even better. Because the whole point of uh, this definition of atheism is that it creates a dichotomy, if you will, uh, between belief and lack of belief. So it's about belief, it's not about existence. So uh, if you compare the first sentence, I believe that God exists, with the third sentence, I believe that God does not exist, then you are comparing two different beliefs. Someone believes one proposition and another person believes a different proposition. But that's not what atheism is about. It's about the negation of belief. Here we come to the second and last part of this uh, little paper, where I try to explain what I mean in the title of the paper when I say that atheism is an exemplar of rationality. So I'm talking about atheism as the rational choice. So the way I understand rationality is that uh, a rational person believes what is justified to believe and nothing else. Or rather, an, a person who is uh, behaving rationally is only forming beliefs in accordance with the justification for beliefs. So there's the problem that I already mentioned uh, regarding theism and atheism of defining God. Before God has been defined, it's pretty much impossible to really uh, have any beliefs uh, concerning God. And any discussion of God is really kind of pointless. So we have to start with some kind of understanding of what it is that we are talking about. Otherwise, it's the same as someone asking, uh, do you believe in Rumpelstiltskin? So assuming you don't know who or what Rumpelstiltskin is, then what can you really say? Nothing. I mean, or rather, you can say that no, you don't believe in Rumpelstiltskin because you don't even know what the hell Rumpelstiltskin is supposed to be. So it's the same with God when the word God is not defined. If someone asks you, do you believe in God? You don't know what they are talking about unless they define their God. So it could be the God of Christianity, which usually, uh, in my experience, has been uh, what people are talking about. And that's also why they, in writing, capitalize the word. But uh, they might as well be talking about Zeus or Thor or whatever. To be a rational person, we have to start with the default position of not believing anything and only forming beliefs in accordance with the evidence and arguments, in other words, justification that we have for believing something. And therefore, non-belief is the rational default position. And anyone who makes a positive claim about something bears the burden of proof. So, if um, theist uh, claims that God exists, it's up to them to prove that God exists, or at least give uh, enough evidence or good arguments to support that claim. We are uh, otherwise uh, really not duty-bound or whatever to have any beliefs regarding the existence of God or the attributes of God or anything like that any more than we are with regards to Rumpelstiltskin. So, atheism is really a particularly good example of rational belief formation, or rather, it's the foundation, the basis of 
uh, thinking. And that is why I call it an exemplar of rationality. I also have a small short paper that I'm not really sure where it's from. It could be from an email or something, but it uh, continues on the same subject, really. I have titled it uh, The Way of the Philosopher. So in this paper, or whatever it may be, I just um, emphasize the duty of a philosopher, as I see it. This might apply to everyone, but it's really more of my personal thinking regarding myself uh, and possibly philosophers more generally. Philosophers, in my view, are supposed to be or duty bound to be uh, rational or as rational as they can be, behave rationally, form beliefs rationally. To be ethically justified in believing something, a philosopher has to be epistemically justified in believing that. Belief is an ethical issue, especially for a philosopher. And that is because untruths and lies are potentially harmful. Uh, I mean, they are harmful in more ways than one, but uh, they carry potential uh, for harm harm for the believer and other people. For example, if a person uh, just tells an untruth, which is not necessarily a lie, that's a distinction that you should know, uh, other people who hear it are likely to, at least if they trust that person, to also believe the same thing. So an untruth or a lie is likely to propagate and that in itself in my opinion is harmful but also it might cause some other kinds of harm we should be careful about what we say and uh, whatever we do in social media post memes and write and whatever we should uh, everywhere really be careful about what we speak but because we are at least if we are <laughs> honest and uh, open about ourselves then whatever we believe we are likely to also talk about so we have to be careful to not believe things that are not justified to believe or we are not justified in believing those things. What that means is we should um, refrain from uh, forming beliefs too easily. Uh, we can suspend our judgment about things far more than we usually do. And we should be critical of especially important things. If something is important for us personally, then we should be especially careful to make sure that we are justified in believing that thing. Because we are likely to talk about that thing to others. Uh, but even if we think that we have the best justification for our belief, we should always also remember that we might still be wrong. So even in the strongest cases, we should always remember to only accept any claim or belief provisionally. Always remember that whatever we believe to be true or false might be the other. It may later turn out to be something other than we thought. So it goes both ways. We might believe something to be true or we might believe that something is false and we might be wrong. We just have to remember that. And I end this paper with a quote, which might be from Hakagure, possibly. I'm not sure anymore, but it goes like this. Death is a feather, duty is a mountain. I think it kind of 
underlines how important this sort of thing is. So especially for a philosopher, this is a big deal, in my opinion. So that's it for now. Bye.